Ansible Automation and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Now this is one of the top five use cases for scalable infrastructure automation, and I'm talking about provisioning. So before we even touch any code, let's have a look at one of the tools that sits on the platform. And I'm talking about the Savings Planner. Why is the Savings Planner so important? Well, it allows me to judge the automation that we're gonna build with some kind of return of investment. So this example around VMware provisioning, you can see all of the steps. And if we go and we put it through the planner, it will come and project a savings, not only in money, but as well in time, uh, according to a three year deployment, right? So if we had to use this automation for three years, we could potentially save this amount of money and time, which is really important. Now let's go and have a look on our platform. We're gonna build some very basic provisioning here, nothing too complex. And we can obviously trans translate all of this and run a simple template and provision but that's not really dynamic. What we wanna be using is a workflow. A workflow's got a lot of power because it allows us to logically build progression through our automation. Instead of a single task, we could have multiple tasks. So I start off with a single automation to, to build a system and build an instance, but now we're gonna add a little bit of config into this. What's more, we're gonna add a failure condition. So we're gonna be able to add a ticketing system. So this is really simple, it's only really three steps, but should something fail, I'll know about it. Now, to make this more dynamic, we will introduce a survey into this workflow. And that survey allows us to get input. So you can see that when we basically publish this to anyone who wants to use it, they can go and customize the instance that they want to provision. So you could have a step here to actually even ask which data center, which cloud, etc. But ultimately, the user can decide all their details they want to submit, and they can go and start that. Now, we could also add an approval system into this workflow, but I wanted to really keep it simple, right? So we now go in and we're now building. So our platform, our automation controller is now running all of this automation. It's now talking to our hypervisor, and it's basically building the instance that we've requested or that we've desired. Now, a cool thing with the fact that we're working through a workflow is we can still go through the individual automation steps. So as you see here, we are kind of getting the output and the run by run as each step takes place. So right now, for example, we've gone through and we've built the base image. We've now set in the, the root passwords that we've desired. Soon we're gonna be injecting all the IP addressing that we want and we're taking it through step by step, right? So we can see all this output, it's great. It helps us with debugging. Anyone who's worked with Ansible CLI will already recognize this. So this is a really cool thing that we can actually see from our automation controller. Now that's successful. This whole workflow is successful, which means that we've gone through the steps. So let's go back into our jobs and we can see, we can see the workflow is complete, but let's go look at that second step. That second step added a little bit of configuration, so a little bit more than just provisioning. And you can see here, we've added users that we want. We've added a Apache web server. We've done all of the uh, disclaimers on our servers. Plus we did a bit of firewall. So this is it. Our workflow is successful. Our two-step provisioning is successful. So the only thing left that for us to do really is to actually go and have a look and check if this has actually worked on our system. So our system is up, it's ready to go, we can log into it, we will go directly through uh, hostname to find it. We're using the Ansible username, which is already predefined for us to automate it. And we can see the disclaimer is there that we wanted, which is great. And now we're gonna go and have a look at our service. You know, is our service up and running? So is Apache deployed, is it running? and we can see that it is. So we're successful. Our two-step provisioning is done.